This over here is Samsung's latest and greatest NVMe technology, the Samsung 990 EVO Plus. What does the plus mean? Exactly what do you get extra and how does it compare to some of the other Samsung drives or some of the other drives that are on the market? Are you going to make a good choice purchasing this drive? Well, you don't know, but I do. And now I'm going to show you. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com. And if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done. Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. Now, as you can see, compared to the Evo, it is very, very similar. And what you can see, what's going on in here is, obviously, I can see that the controller is different because on the Evo, it is black, but now it is suddenly silver. And the Evo, I have the two terabyte model of both, Evo and Evo Plus. But as you can see, there is one chip missing, which means that you can get four terabytes in total for the Evo Plus. And looks like Samsung is trying to compete with the WDSN 5000 drive. Do you remember this guy over here? That you have a bit of a budget option, but now finally four terabytes in sizes, which is actually very, very good. Uses host memory buffer and so on. And this is the same here with the Samsung 990 EVO Plus. It comes in one terabyte, two terabyte and four terabyte in sizes, but the 990 EVO only caps out at two terabytes. The other thing that makes this drive very, very interesting is this is a hybrid drive. What does a hybrid drive mean? Well, this is a PCIe Gen 4 X4 drive. So four lanes of PCIe Gen 4 go into the drive, or it can also swap it to PCIe Gen 5 X2, which is exactly the same total bandwidth between both of the drives. But I'm hoping that some of the motherboard manufacturers, for example, would actually make slots on the motherboard that will have PCIe Gen 5, but two lanes to it, which means you can have more M.2 storage like this one here. So you can still get full bandwidth on the Gen 5 slot, but actually leaving some more lanes free to use for something else on the motherboard. Oh, and as you can see, the chips are only on the top side, nothing on the bottom, absolutely nothing's going on there. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll get back to the video. Let's take a look at some of the benchmarks then, and how does this compare? Firstly, sequential read and write speed, which is not really very interesting and not very reliable, because what you can see here is that basically our Samsung drive is there and looks like someone's taken a rule and then just made all of these middle drives basically the same speed. And then we've got the lower end drives with a little bit lower, and then finally the Gen 5 on the top there, which are a lot faster. And as you can see, it goes to 7,086 meta megabytes per second, which is roughly somewhere in the middle of the park. We can see that the Lexar NM790 here, they are very much the same. And the 990 Pro from Samsung here goes actually a little bit faster to 7,135 megabytes per second. In terms of sequential write speeds, what you can see here is actually a little bit lower down on the pack. We have all of these high-end Gen 4 drives and then they slowly go down towards the 990 EVO Plus, which we have here. Slightly lower than the SN850X from WD, 6,154 megabytes per second. That's nothing really impressive, but the more impressive things are the actual real world benchmarks if you put it into your system how does it work in terms of applications am i going to get you know faster loading speeds how does this work so this is quick system drive benchmark by pc mark 10 and what this benchmark does is it actually uses or utilizes the drive in a light load so light load is if you put a secondary drive onto your system and you use it to store documents and photos and maybe some videos and then you open and open some photos some videos documents working on it so it's light use it's not heavy where you're going to be doing programs or heavy video or hardly loading onto it you know just maybe a secondary drive in your laptop and actually this drive performs very very well you can see on top of the chart interestingly about 12 percent slower than the 990 evo that is absolutely fantastic there now, why is the EVO actually faster, even though being slower in terms of maximum sequential read and write speeds? I'm not sure. All of these drives have been tested exactly in the same system. So to see the same drive with the same capacity 
The plus doesn't look like that much of a plus to me in a quick system drive benchmark. Interestingly, it's still slightly faster than our 990 Pro from Samsung, which is the higher end with DRAM drive, because this drive here doesn't have any DRAM. It uses host memory buffer. Usually DRAM drives will have better constant read and write speeds, but in a quick system drive benchmarks, it doesn't matter that much. It does exchange blows with our Solidime P44 Pro, which is one of the best Gen 4 NVMe drives that I have tested. As you can see, the 990 EVO, 990 EVO Plus, and then the Solidime drives are literally there. Interestingly, the 990 EVO is leading the charge in this quick system benchmark. Moving on to data benchmark, and this is where the drive is being used more like a data drive, a bit more storage and a bit more writing on it and reading of it, and maybe a little bit more storage or archival drive benchmark, basically. Now, we're seeing the similar thing. As you can see here, that's our Samsung 990 EVO, and then the EVO Plus is lower down in performance. We're losing to the Solidime drives, P44 Pros, and the 990 Pro. At the same time, we're roughly about the same as the Team Group Z540 drive, which is a Gen 5 drive, which is absolutely amazing. So this is the top pack, as you can see there, in terms of Gen 4 drives, and then the rest of the Gen 4 kind of come in the secondary pack there, and then it slowly kind of goes downwards. Obviously the Gen 5s, again, are on the top of the chart, but it really performs within a couple of percent of the best Gen 4 drives out there, apart from the Z540 from Team Group. Moving on to full system drive benchmark, and this tests the drive as the system drive. Running programs and operating system, how good is it when doing that? And you can see again, we're roughly about in the top part of the Gen 4 drives. Now this time, the 990 EVO, which is over here, is actually lower, a couple of percent lower than the 990 EVO Plus. In fact, this right now here is the best system drive that Samsung has offered or what I have tested. We've got the 990 Pro slightly slower. Okay, we're talking about 2%, 2.5% slower, something like that, but still, a little bit lower than the 990 EVO, but still lower. Interestingly, the Solidime P44 drives are still better drives here in terms of operating system. They, for some reason, are some of the best ones that I have ever tried. And then we've got the Gen 5 drives on top of the charts here, which obviously lead it to another level because of their random read and write speeds and completely new technology. But this 990 EVO Plus, being lower in price point for system operating drive, maybe use that one instead of the 990 Pro. Now drive performance consistency test, which basically absolutely hammers the drive. We're fully filling the drive about three times, we're writing over 20 terabytes of files on it, and this test takes over 20 hours to complete. This really tests the drive at its absolute, kind of a even synthetic performance, when someone really writes files on it, and not a lot of people need that, but there are people, creators, who might need that type of performance and wanna know how good is the drive under absolutely heavy load. And here, what we see is usually the drives that don't have DRAM cache absolutely fall apart because the constant read and write, they just can't handle it. And we can see the same thing in here. This 990 EVO Plus is somewhere further down in the charts and not necessarily impressive because now we can see that the Samsung 990 Pro, which we have over there, really delivers with one terabyte capacity, double the capacity, but the DRAM and the controller are able to make a lot better performance than the 990 EVO plus two terabyte version. Interestingly, the 990 EVO is a lot higher than our 990 EVO plus. So it looks like the plus, we're not really getting anything extra in terms of the consistency test. Both of these are two terabytes, and I would argue that the 990 EVO Plus here had even lower at room temperature, which should make the drive perform even better. But no, unfortunately not. We're about 8% slower. Regarding terabyte written spec, Samsung offers five years of warranty and the same terabyte written spec as on all of them. The only difference is in here, where the 990 EVO doesn't have a four terabyte model, but only caps out at two terabytes. Oh, I should be making this in the middle here, that drives me mental. Which basically the 990 EVO Plus has a little bit of a better controller and higher speed, 
and 4 terabytes in capacity and offers 600 terabytes per terabyte endurance rating. Now then, what can we say about this EVO Plus drive? According to my benchmark and my testing, honestly, the Plus doesn't give you that much extra. I would say that looking at the price point, which I highly recommend you checking out in the video description below, it's probably best going with the EVO rather than the EVO Plus because the EVO offers better performance in pretty much every case scenario. The only thing different is the sequential read and write speeds aren't as good, but at the same time, I'd like to see you utilize five gigabytes per second or more speed in your actual workflow. Yes, in certain file transfers, it will make a difference, but for most people, probably not. Now, the 990 EVO Plus is mostly for people who are looking a little bit of a lower budget drive for maybe systems and secondary easy drive, but at large capacity and they don't want to spend it on the 990 Pro from Samsung, but want the reliability, but the fast write speeds, that was the 990 EVO Plus is for. Four terabytes, and a higher speed. Now, Samsung says that they're also power efficient than the previous generation drive. And honestly, these NVMEs hardly use any power at all, like one watt here or one watt there. That's not a big difference, but the bigger difference is the performance. So if you're looking for a four terabyte Samsung reliable drive at a little bit of lower budget end, this drive is for you instead of the 990 Pro. Go check it out in the video description below. And if you're interested in building yourself the best bank for buck creator PC and get the best performance for your money PC build, then this build guys in the video description below. Whatever your budget is, there's one for you. Go check it out. Thanks guys for watching. Bye bye.